My dear friends, welcome to Rajashekar classes on Applied Data Science with Python. This is lecture number 426. In this lecture, we will try to understand stacking models. Stacking classifier or stacking models in general is a very nice idea. It is also one of the form of ensembling. We have seen backing and boosting. Stacking classifier is a very much common technique. In some research papers, you could call it as a stacked generalization. So, the page that I am in M M L Extend. This is M L Extend. It is very, very popular library for building stacking classifier for building stacking uh, classifier isn't it ml extend works very closely and it works very neatly with scikit learn and hence we pick ml extend as our choice of library as our choice of library for implementing stacking classifier stacking classifiers are not implemented in scikit-learn. This is important. Stacking classifiers are not implemented in scikit-learn natively. For example, we have seen that gradient boosting, gradient boosting is implemented. Random forest is implemented. Unfortunately, stacking is not natively implemented in sklearn and hence we are taking code base from ml extend before we go to the before before we go to the code base itself let's understand the concept the concept is very simple the concept goes as follows imagine i have a training data i have my training data here i use my training data now i use my training data to create m models c1 classification model 1, C2 classification model 2, so on, CM classification model M. These are all M models. That These are all M models that I have built on my training data. These models can be very different. Ideally, the more ideally, the more different these models are, the better it is for us. And remember, all these models are constructed parallelly and independent of each other. Remember, when we did boosting, we constructed each model depending on the previous model. That we should understand, isn't it? In the case of boosting, we constructed each model depending on previous model. In this case, in this case, in the sense, in stacking, each of the models C1, C2, so on, Cm build independently. That is important. This is more in line with what we have seen in bagging. In bagging, each of our base models are built independent of other models. Typically, what happens here, what happens here is these models are not the same. In many cases, in many cases in stacking, C1 might be a linear SVM, my C2 might be RBF SVM, C3 might be GBDT, my C4 might be an NI base, C5 might be KNN with K equal 5, C6 could be another KNN with K equal to 3. Every model has some advantage over other model. So actually in stacking itself, the more different these models are, the better it typically tends to work. Theoretically, you, you, you can have any models, but in practice, stacking actually helps us build better ensemble if each of your models or classifiers are different from each other. The more I can say the more different, better it tends to be. Let's go step by step. You, you, you are, uh, uh, you are try, you train. Uh, you uh, let me say 
you train your m models independent of each of independent of each of other and you try to make as different as possible since you have m models what happens imagine if you have a query point xq you can you can pass it to each of these models c1 c2 so on cm if you pass your query point xq to each of these models each of these models will give you some value for example c1 will give you yq yq1 just see this one your c1 is giving yq1 let it be let me assume yes your c1 is giving yq1 and your uh, let me say c2 will give yq yq2 this model c3 will give yq3 and so on so forth your cm is giving yq m let, let it be all these all yqs these 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 all are yqs these all are your yqs now why don't we build one more model on top of all these yqs remember in random forest in the case of random forest what did we do we made each of these models c1 c2 so on cm overfit overfit models if you remember just try to recall the basically they are overfit models models and the model that we have the final model the final model where we are mixing of all the outputs of the m classifier is called meta classifier that if find the the more the model we have the final model where we are mixing of all the outputs of the m classifiers we are mixing all the outputs of m classifiers that is called as meta meta classifier isn't it in bagging each of your base models are high variance in bagging each of your base models are high variance and low bias models and the meta classifier was not actually a classifier because what did we use we use aggregation what is the aggregation operation majority voting which are basically techniques for us to reduce the variance that's that that was bagging it is different from your stacking this bagging is different from you were stack uh, stacking isn't it in stacking each of these models are well tuned models each of these models are perfect models they have good bias variance trade off among them but instead of using but instead of using but instead of using any one model we are trying to see if i can combine these models by having one or model on top of it this 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 meta classifier model this meta classifier model could be typically a logistic regression or itself could be a decision tree or anything this is this, this is how it works let's go through the algorithm step wise step wise your final prediction comes from your meta classifier let's go and look at algorithm algorithmically this diagram looks cool let's let's look at this algorithm step by step what is this algorithm step by step we will try to understand suppose imagine my data set is capital d which has m points isn't it x i y i i equal to 1 to m now what now what do i i want i want ensemble classifier called h just see i want what i want i want ensembled classifier this h is isn't it yes this is my final uh, final model the, the way we will work is uh, is first first let's assume i want t base classifier just see for i for t equal to small 1 to capital t learn base classifiers ht on d this is for this is for this is end of for what does it mean what does it mean so what am i doing here i am taking my total training data i am taking my total training data this is my total uh, training uh, data i am training t classifiers how many classifiers i am training t classifiers 
Why? Because you are small t equal to 1 to capital T. Therefore, what are those uh, t classifiers? I can say H1, H2, H3, so on. I can say H capital T. All of them are in, independent. The, all these H1, H2, H3 are, 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 all are independent. Each of these classifiers is learned independently. H1, H2, H3, so on, H3, they learn in, independently and they have perfect, they have perfect bias variance trade off. You are already done good bias variance trade off for each of these models. These more, these more, these are the, these are models like one model like uh, one model could be uh, I, I can say H1 H1 this could be K and uh, just let me say all these models are perfect by um, perfect bias variance trade um, perfect bias variance trade off models your H1 uh, could be K N with K equal to two. Your H two could be K N with K equal to three. Your H three could be linear S V M. I can say it's linear. It could be linear S V M. Your H T. This could be a logistic uh, regression, etc. But all of them are trained independently with proper bias variance trade off. Now this is step one. Now what we do here? What is in step one? Small t equal to uh, 1 to capital T, learn base classifiers H of T means H1, H2, so on, H capital, H capital T. This is my step 1. What is step Step 2 means, uh, I think this number 5 to number 8. This is step 2, isn't it? This is number 5 to 8. What is this number 5 to 8? We will try to understand. Now, we construct a new data set from capital D. That's what it says. Just see, you have to construct a new data set construct new data set from capital d what is my capital d my capital d is training data set now we construct new data set from capital d which of the form d train this capital d is d train and what do we do since for each of the points for x so x i comma y i i equal to one term for each of each of the points points from uh 1 to m. Remember, d has m points. This capital D has m points. x1, y1, x2, y2, so on, xm, ym. For each data point now, you will construct corresponding data point. For each data point, xi comma yi in capital D. For each data point, xi comma yi in capital D, we will create a new data set D dash. What is my D dash for each? What is my D dash? D dash is Xi I dash Xi. Your D dash is Xi I dash comma Yi such that Xi dash you, you create a new data set D dash which is equal to Xi dash comma Yi for each Xi for each point Xi you created new data set such that your xi dash equal to just see your xi dash equal to h1 x of i comma h2 x of i ht x of i it is a vector what is this this h1 x of i h2 x of i this basically it is a vector of outputs vector of outputs vector of outputs from the previous model from the from the previous from the previous models from the previous models this is exactly what we have here in diagram what is in diagram just see this diagram what it says in this diagram what we have this so you take output from these these models output from c1 c2 so on output from base model c1 c2 so on cm and make an input to the classifier meta classifier so what i have done i build my capital t models here from this one i build capital t models from from 2 to 4 this one capital t models here is isn't it here i build capital t base models capital build t base models I, isn't it here i build t base models on my total data set this is on my total data set capital D that is D train. Thus, in second stage, what is in second? This is first stage. In second stage, I am constructing 
a new data set capital D dash a new data set uh, capital D dash which is equal to X i dash comma Y i X i dash is equal to H1 of X i comma H2 of X i comma so on H T of X i. Now remember your X i you must remember your X i dash what is this X i dash your X i dash belongs to R T T T dimensional. This is T dimensional vector. Your X i dash belongs to R T. So now, since I got this data, now I will construct a second level classifier. My meta classifier. I will construct my meta classifier based on X i dash comma Y i based on X i dash comma Y i. And what is my final classifier? My final classifier is given XQ, given a query point XQ, what is my final model? On the new classifier, I, I am building a, a building, I call this H dash, this H dash, learn a new classifier H dash and all the base models I learned HT is, is so, what is my final model? My final model is H dash of, my final model is what is this H final model is my YQ equal to H dash of H1 of XQ comma H2 of XQ so on H T of XQ. I am getting the output from each of this each of the base models and I am making the output from each of the base models as an input to the meta classifier H dash input to the meta classifier. What is your meta classifier? My H dash and my meta classifier finally gives the class label YQ. Which one is, is giving the final class label YQ? Your meta classifier finally gives the class label YQ. This is very, very nice documentation of how it works, isn't it? This is very, very simple and elegant one. You need to train meta classifier on the outputs or the predictions of your base learner. That is very, very important. Just go through this. If you have any difficulty, please, please keep comments. Anyway, I will continue my discussion on stacking models. Thank you very much.